Hi, Rich. How are you? Well, Dan, I'm here in my office at the uh, at the Rich Eisen Show in El Segundo, and I came to work today, and I have this metal briefcase placed here thanks uh, to you. It was a gift to me, and I haven't opened it yet. But, man, uh, thanks in advance. What's in it? Uh, you know what? I want it to be a surprise, but uh, okay. 13 other of my closest friends got those briefcases. So. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Feel, feels heavy. Yeah. Feels <laughs> heavy. Uh, we, what do you think of George Clooney's move there? That that he, he this that, happened three years ago one. where everybody gets a million dollars who's one of his boys there. Of course, it's that's good stuff, man. I mean, it's absolutely great stuff right there. Um, I'm wondering because I, I heard you talking about it, obviously on the way in. Um, do you think because you know obviously Randy Gerber said that they paid taxes on it. Do you think there's some a member of the Internal Revenue Service that was listening <laughs> that says let's just see. If that actually happened, you think there's somebody sure. who's actually on the case right now? Dan? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Checking the math. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I want you to weigh in on you get one album, only one album to listen to the rest of your life. Oh, my gosh. Um, uh, I, so I'm going to go one with volume. Um, I'll go white album. Okay. Well, it was so taken gotta... by me, but. It's, oh, really? Yeah, it's off. Did the you book. say that? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, honestly, that I did not know. You must have talked about that in the first hour. Yes, I did. Um, how about Joe Walsh's Greatest Hits? No, you how can't do that? Greatest Hits. Why not? I got rules here, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get the fine print. I, got... I just got this briefcase. That's all I've got from you here. We got standards here. You can't do a Greatest Hits compilation. Oh, and man. the White Album's already taken. Well, I had no idea that the White Album was already taken. Um how about Born in the USA, then? Springsteen. You, that's, you can have that. That's yours. Thank you. Yeah. Sold. I will take that. Did you interview Springsteen when he was the I did. Have to, how was I that? I did. It was great. I mean, it's royalty, man. Uh, he didn't know much football. Um, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the, the halftime act that I've been fortunate to interview that knew the most, believe it or not, that blew me away was Mick Jagger for Super Bowl Forty in Detroit. And hmm. he actually knew, uh, speaking of Heinz Ward, he actually knew the storylines describing how the Steelers are a team that's been there before, but they have this young quarterback who sort of is a guy <laughs> who's trying to make sure that he doesn't turn the ball over. He basically described Ben Roethlisberger as game manager, which he was, if you recall, back prior to Super Bowl Forty, yeah. and how the other team had a really good running back, and they, you know... They're, they're, he likes their story because they haven't been to the Super Bowl before. And I'm like, geez, he's explaining Alexander and the Seahawks. That was wild. Um, Springsteen didn't know that much about it, but we just went over his set list and what he, you know, what this meant to him. And, you know, coming from Staten Island, that, that's, that's royalty right there in Springsteen. Hey, I'm thinking, you know, he's a Jersey guy that, that he'd be brought. I know he's a Yankee fan, but I'm surprised he didn't know didn't follow the NFL. Yeah, he, he's not in a fa he wasn't in a fantasy league with the big <laughs> man, you know. <laughs> he wasn't he wasn't in that one, you know. The uh the E Street band uh, fantasy league I guess didn't exist, but um Well, I met Dave yeah, Matthews I mean, and Matthews he, he has he, you know, I was in a movie with him with Sandler, but he had no idea who I was and and so I went to see him in concert and he said, here, let me take you to somebody who's going to appreciate you being here. And he opened the door to his drummer. And, uh, you know, so I, I, I spent all – he goes, he goes uh, yeah, hey, uh, Carter, I got somebody to see you. He opens the door, and Carter goes, hey, Dan Patrick. And then Dave Matthews goes, oh, so you know who he is? All right, you guys can talk. Because Dave, Dave, Dave had no, he had no game. He, had, he couldn't even fake it. He's like, I, I don't yeah, know so. any sports here. I don't. I don't Gee, know anything. Berman, Berman never got that hey, treatment of hey, Huey and Lewis. Boy. Never got that. <laughs> no, no, he did not. All right. Uh, uh, by the way, I went, down a Berman, I went down a Berman wormhole on the air last week on game day morning because of Adam Thielen, that, yeah. that he would have been like the perfect Berman nickname guy this year if Berman was doing his gig uh, as he has the last few years. Yeah. So many people miss him. Uh, just the Adam hooked on a feeling, peaceful, easy feeling. Um, Adam uh, feeling all right. You know, it was just... <laughs> 
<laughs> I just couldn't stop for like a full hour. It was tough to get out of There it. are times when I'm doing highlights where I channel him. I, 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 you know, the, 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 yeah, right, of course. And, and then you just sort of morph into this JJ. <laughs> we'll be back. Yeah, they're not gonna get him. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think this new generation. If you're under 35, understand the 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 impact of Chris Berman on highlights. In, oh no, no doubt about it. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, and Dan, in a way, okay, you know, what you're doing on Sunday nights on NBC is that's, you know, that's prime time. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what, and it's great to see. And I, I think, and, you know, NFL Network has a, uh, a show as well. We're doing highlights. Um, you know, I used to do that before the morning, but I still think a highlight driven show with intelligent conversation laced in is I, I don't know if I don't know if I'm a dinosaur, but I don't know why there's not enough of those on T V anymore. Just assuming you're gonna see it beforehand, you're yeah. seeing it on Twitter, you're seeing it online, and it's not worthy of just sitting down for an hour and creating a television show that's entertaining, that's highlight driven. Uh, I miss it. I really do. Well also we made a conscious effort to I, I, I'm one of the few hosts, I don't know any of the other hosts who do all the highlights because you usually bring the analyst in, but the analyst isn't good at doing highlights. They're good at complimenting highlights, not doing the highlights. I like when Rodney and Tony interject and they'll have like one line and then they'll get out. That That's, you know, a conscious effort on our part to c- have a little bit of fun, say something, and then I'll get to you about the highlights you just saw. I don't want you doing the highlights. It's a lot more work for me, but it does bring me back to the Sports Center days when I loved that sort of frenetic pace. It's live TV, yeah. and you're doing these highlights, and you get to have a little bit of fun, a little bit of freedom. So uh, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I w- I'm with you. It's just it's a fun watch. Certainly, when uh, my kids sit down and watch Uncle Dad as well. <laughs> um, I, I've been mentioning. Here's the poll question here, McLevin. Give uh, Rich Eisen the poll question here. Brought it, to you by HGTV. If you were Sam Darnold or Josh Rose and knew the Browns were going to pick you, would you go to the Browns, go back to school, or publicly let it be known you didn't want to be drafted by Cleveland? All right. This is this is the annual this is the annual conversation we've had now for three four years. And this is one of them. Okay. And yep. the other one is would would the Browns beat the best college team? Okay. <laughs> and both of them are just so just. Of course, he's going to the Browns. He should go to the Browns. The Browns are. Why wouldn't you go to the Browns? I understand that there's a graveyard of names, but now you can always be the one to change it. Look at what LeBron has done with the, the Cavs. Why can't you decide that I'm one of the best of all time? Why can't you decide I'm the guy who's going to change it all? That's the sort of attitude you need to have going into the NFL. You must. And this day and age, back in the day where Eli said, I don't want to go to the Chargers and even you know, uh, others before doing that, those days are, are over. They're over. He should go to the Browns. And by the way, the Browns would destroy – any of the teams that are in the college football playoffs right now, they wouldn't even score a point maybe. So I hope they go to the Browns, and I hope that that's leading your poll. Thank you, Rich. McLovin, give the results there. Yeah, the Browns are leading 39%. Then go back to school, 34%. Only 24% say, let it be known you don't want to go there. The sanity of the Dan Patrick (laughs) audience. I greatly appreciate it. Well, your audience is a reflection of you, and you're a reflection of your audience there. And once again, I guess to bring it all full circle, thanks for the case, Dan. You're welcome. Thanks for the case. Enjoy. Enjoy. (laughs) Thank you, Rich. All right, DP. That's Rich Eisen. NFL Network, Rich Eisen Show, comes up immediately after this on Audience Channel 239. That's DirecTV. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV or download the Dan Patrick Show app.